making teams earlier this morning, roughly 10 a.m., and it is now down to two. Two Michigan teams, two Michigan powerhouses, Grand Valley State University and Central, Central Michigan. I was doing so well. I was doing so well. <laughs> that is the voice of Ben Subcheck. I am Alex Heigelbeck. Thank you for joining us all weekend. Uh, Josh Raymer is setting up a camera elsewhere. That camera uh, will be showing the opposite side of the court, but there will be no commentary. So I suggest you go over straight to that one so you have to hear us talk. Uh, or, or stay here if, if you, if you want to hear us or stay here, yeah. babble on. There's only one person here right now, so you can say whatever we want. Uh, <laughs> hey, one viewer. I think it might count us as a viewer. Though. Is it? <laughs> it's, it's us. Uh, I'm sure people are going to start streaming in um, as this gets underway. Dude, 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 dude. Boom, got it. Thank you. Puns for days. Oh boy, uh, call me the Punisher. <laughs> so this will be another okay. one. Well, I'm sure this will get mentioned multiple times. This is a carbon copy repeat of four years ago. Right here yeah. in this very gym, when our, uh, I mean, the, the final tournament last time, uh, it was here at WKU, saw Central Michigan versus Grand Valley, and that makes this even bigger because that was Central Michigan's first ever tournament win uh, in a national tournament, so, or, you know, first ever grand champion in a national tournament, so we could either see a repeat of that, or we could see... Um, Grand Valley continue its, would, would this be three years in a row, I believe, for them? Yeah, I think it is. Jazz, Jazzy Josh Raymer is joining us after having set up the other stream. Is it, th is it three years in a row for Grand Valley if they win this one? Um, yes, I believe so. Um, wait, no. I think Saginaw Valley might have won it one of those years. Uh, so if they win it, I think this would be three years in a row for Grand Valley. Correct us if we're wrong out there in listener land, but I think this will make it for three in a row for Grand Valley. The cup sitting off to the side. You can see it in the very right of your screen right now. Ooh, we're going to zoom in on that cup. That's probably going to be hit within the course of this game <laughs> by it something. Falls off and it breaks. Oh, that God. That'd be, that would be heartbreaking. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen. Nathan Ward, a hearty hey to you as well. And Matt Zinn. Matt Zinn, we, uh, we appreciate if, uh, or we appreciate you commentary, or, uh, dealing with the commentary. Matt Zinn also told us that, yes, indeed, uh, this will be a three-peat for Grand Valley. Okay. There you go. So this is what it all comes down to, boys. All the I did the whole 16 teams yes. down to two. Down to two. All those uh, missing fingernails and muscle cramps and fatigue and all that stuff. you push The banana peels that have yes. been thrown away this week. All the bottles of water, all the icy hot. You can smell it glowing oh. up from the players right now. This is what it's all about right here. It's a combination of sweat and just... And and beignet and icy hot. That's really <laughs> what it is. It's it is a ne don't go into the multi-purpose room no, and expect don't, don't to have um, not go nose blind to something. I don't know. And we got number seven Sherman going down there to uh, off the opening rush. Well, for those of you, uh, you know, I said it once before, but we got more people showing up in the stream now. Uh, we do have another stream running that's showing the opposite side court view. So if you're on a computer and have the ability to pull both those up, you can get a nice view of both sides of the court. Uh, if you're on a mobile device, this will be the one that we're running commentary on. Uh, we will stay in this position for the entire match, so we will get a face-forward view of uh, Central Michigan during the second half. Yeah, and I mean, if you're, if you're a big Central Michigan fan and you want to watch that stream, be our guest. It is, it is their view. You will see their players from their, uh, from their, from their front. But oh, Both of those links have been posted on the NCDA Facebook page. There you go. That's all you need to know, even though you probably already got here through the Facebook page. So why, <laughs> even, already, why yeah. plug it in? But just to let you know in case Tell you did. <laughs> Tell your friends. There you go. I've been posting it. Jumped up to 16 viewers already. That's pretty good. Nothing wrong with that. I bet a lot of people are on their drive home. I bet some of them, one person's putting this stream up, listening to it, and the other people are putting up the other one if they want to watch that. Uh, that's some innovation there. Yeah. Maybe they're tired of listening to us, and the other stream has way more listeners. Uh, uh, we could be. For, for the, anyone that is watching or listening to the stream on the way home, any of the teams that have already started their journey home, thank you so, 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 so much for joining us this weekend. We appreciate everyone making the ride down. We appreciate everyone being so incredibly helpful and uh, understanding throughout the whole tournament. Having everyone here and willing to help and really helping us stick to the schedule made this thing go off very smoothly. So thank you so much. And we look forward to seeing all of the teams that were here this weekend and more 
wherever uh, final or wherever the tournament ends up being next year. We ha have, has that decision been made yet? No, that decision will be made after the season is over. Uh, I believe three teams put in bids for next year's nationals, so we'll just have to wait and see who wins the vote. Are we allowed to talk about those three teams, or is that something that's... I don't want to say who they are in case another one, one team decided not. <laughs> Very Ooh, okay. Those three are interesting. We're going to the moon, boys. I, uh... I didn't think that we allowed the moon. I, I didn't think we allowed foreign universities to apply for that position. The University of Russia didn't put in their bid last night. So not much action happening here. These teams definitely feeling each other out. Um, yeah, Eastern Europe, that's a big place for dodgeball. You know, we've seen the movie. We know that they murdered. Radioactive dodgeball. Yeah. <laughs> the Chernobyl uh, so <laughs> kinsman. Let's talk about... What do we expect to see this round? I believe, Jazzy, you mentioned earlier that you were expecting to see CMU in the finals. Uh, I don't think any of us talked about seeing Grand Valley. But I don't know if that was, that was what we thought was going to happen or what we hoped would happen because we kind of wanted to see some new blood. But let's talk about the uh, outcomes that we expect maybe from this match. I mean, I've said it before and I say it again. It's boring because it's consistent, but... You know, Grand Valley lost one game all year, and it was the Central Michigan, so if anyone can do it, it's the Chippewas. But I do have to pick Grand Valley in this game. Uh, but a little bit of magic in this building for Central Michigan having won their only championship here. So we'll see, but I'm taking Grand Valley in this one. I think it'll be a very low-scoring game, like a 2 nothing or 1-1 one -one game that goes into overtime. I don't think we're going to have many points scored in this game at all. Uh, and that's kind of to be expected. Once teams get to this caliber, the blocking is just obscenely good. You're going to see so few people get hit. And if they do make an obscure one-person throw, it's usually going to get caught. There are some amazing catches with these better teams. And it's, it's insane how many people get back in to the, uh, to the frame because of those catches. Yeah, I expect to see a lot of catches from CMU. That really helped them turn the tide against... JMU in the semifinals, a lot of clutch catches. That's what they're known for. They've been a catching team. Uh, that transformation started after their last championship when they were an offensive powerhouse just like Grand Valley. So uh, I think I expect to see a lot of catches from both teams, but especially Central Michigan this game. Um, what you're going to find is that Grand Valley, and I've been watching them this entire tournament, uh, or at least this day, is that uh, they dip down to their knees to make the catches, and it is it, I, I, I'm not sure. It just lessens their uh, the chance of them getting hit from like their limbs. So it's just such a good uh, a catching technique. Smaller target, essentially. Yeah, less surface area for you, you to get. You get hit in the foot. I mean, how many yeah. times have we uh, all been hit on the foot during a game? Yeah, that was Heller. Just went out there, number zero for Central Michigan. Um, there is 11 players on Central Michigan. I think about 14, 13 or 14 for Grand Valley. So Grand Valley in a pretty commanding lead by at least three or four. But at this point, oh, number four goes down to. That that's, a, that's a big loss. Yeah, their captain, who was, who was really getting himself psyched up earlier today, just listening to music. That's what he does. He just has his headphones in. He's like a basketball player or something like that. He's just sitting there zoned He's into his music. He's one of those real athletes with headphones. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Beats going strong. Not someone playing like Clash of Clans on their phone like some of the people. <laughs> I don't like you right now, Jazzy man. <laughs> heart, That's all right. So we're seeing the. Uh, I think what we what did we call it when we were playing the tank formation, where teams would oh, yeah. bunch up in the corners and have one blocker in front. We're seeing a lot of that here from Central Michigan. We used to call them pods. I thought when well, you get yeah. into where you get into little rows of like three or four three right behind, three, yeah, yeah b behind a, a single blocker, and it helps you protect all three players from behind you. The ricochet. <laughs> the foot shot there takes out number 59 for Central Michigan. Grand Valley. Number 59 being Alex Holzgen. Yeah, Grand Valley in a commanding lead already. I think I don't. I think they have 14. Central Michigan down to blow. Ouch, <laughs> right there, took that one in the face. I did not want to lose. The did not break his concentration. Come on. And a catch, catch number 10 has. Number seven. That's Chris Sherman. 
for Grand Valley takes out number 10 for Central Michigan, number 10 being Charles Hess. And yes, the cameraman did just get hit in the head, Alex Cyclebeck. How are you feeling? Uh, pretty good. Pretty good. Can you see? You're blinking. <laughs> yeah, got my left eye. <laughs> Never safe, like, even on the even second on the floor. Track. Not even no. on the track, are you safe. I'm just worried about dropping this iPad. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Oof. The whistle from these Grand Valley throws. Ugh. It's just disgusting after 13 rounds of dodgeball. That, granted, they didn't play in all of those rounds, but that's, that's still a lot of speed after two full days of dodgeball. I think a lot of these guys are getting by just on pure adrenaline right now. I mean, their oh, hands yeah. and arms and just everything, their sides, their backs have just got to be killing them. Yeah, they are, they're not going to feel comfortable tomorrow during the day. Like, every muscle in your, in your lower back, your upper back, hey, your back, your, your, your core is going to be sore, and it's, yeah. it's everything, your arm. There's a funny mm. picture that gets posted uh, on, the NC, on the Facebook page uh, the past couple years. It's of a... Uh, Two stick figures, one of them saying, Sir, can you please sign the receipt? And it says, but my body is broken. And it says, after Nationals, this is how all dodgeball players feel. And I have a feeling that will be the case. Uh, 69 going down there for Central Michigan. That would be Shane Willett. Yeah, uh, when we were playing with the Bourbon Ballers at uh, the Sky Zone, uh, the, the league that we've been playing in lately, um, I've always get I get a Gatorade in between a game and I can't sign yeah. my name because it's just shaking. Just, just make your mark. I just literally just scribble, scribble down. I do want to point out Grand Valley has a full 15 in right now. And uh, Central Michigan has seven, so a 15 to seven man advantage right now for the Lakers. That's what I'm saying. We'll see one point this half. I have a feeling. Ooh, no, that takes got one, 34. That takes out number 34, Jalen Gardner for G GBSU. Every once in a while you get a ricochet from the ground that hits somebody, and you have to, you have to take those in, in the jaw sometimes. Because it's going to hit the ground, it's going to bounce right back up in your face. Again, for those of you that are just now joining us, because we have new people joining the stream every couple of minutes, there is another stream available uh, from Josh Raymer's account that's going to show the opposite side view. Uh, so looking towards uh, Central Central Michigan, sorry, lost the name of the team there. So feel free to jump in there if, uh, if that's the team you're wanting to see more of. Uh, at the half, we will still be over here, so we'll get the face forward view of Central Michigan. But there is another stream up for those of you who want to watch it from that angle. CMU getting really upset at their uh, their own team. The sideline number twelve on CMU is getting pretty upset with their with his players. Are throwing too many balls, giving uh, Grand Valley the uh, the ball advantage. I don't think that's going to be a problem because I, I don't think Grand Valley plays a passive style. I, I think they're going to keep they throwing play again a very, and again. A methodical style, so they don't really waste throws. They have really efficient group throws, and you very rarely see throws that don't work out for them in some form or fashion. I'm sitting here eating my own words when I'm watching this team. It's a different team. I think they were not playing they, they to were, their – They were coasting on day one. Oh, yeah, they did not play the same game that they are playing right now in this tournament because well, I'm seeing a much more polished team than I did yesterday, which lost two points to two of the lower seeds in this tournament, uh, UWP and Kentucky taking points off of them. Is that correct? UWP did or no? Was it um, – It was Penn State. Penn State okay. to, and uh, UK taking a point off of them. That is uncharacteristic of Grand Valley, yeah. especially the ones that we're seeing right now, these players. Another catch from Grand Valley. Yeah, that was a catch by Dylan Fedick just a minute ago, and then a catch by number 35. Another catch. We don't have a, a name for 35. I think that's Nordberg. Yeah, Trevor Nordberg. And he's 36. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> who got out not too long ago, but you got to remember that they're making five another catch from 36. Dang, Norberg's killing him right now. And Don't throw it to him. Now, he got, now 36 gets another CMU player out. And that's Peter Brown, number 54. Grand Valley. Out. And they had their final player, I think Wes Peters, stepped out. So <laughs> yep. Grand Valley will go up one nothing with 13.54 left in the first half. We'll be back with point number two here.